Today's topic is going to be oncolytic virotherapy. And I know just looking at it off the bat that it looks like a really complex topic and it does have a lot of uh, components to it, but if we break these two words apart into its roots, we can kind of figure out what oncolytic virotherapy is. So let's do that. So first we have onco, we also have lytic, and then the second word we have viro, and we have therapy. Now let's try to break those two, those four roots up. So onco, I'm going to write onco because that's very common, it means cancer. Lytic relates to lysis cell death or uh, cell destruction. Viro sounds like virus and it does relate to viruses and therapy relates to therapy. So that's a cell death due to virus therapy. So let's go right into cancer and what, what fundamentals we need to know about cancer for this topic. So cancer is a vast topic, but how does cancer occur? Well, it occurs due to DNA mutations. So let's go revisit our, our a biology class. And we know that DNA replicates. So we have our old DNA and it replicates semi-conservatively. So we'll have a strand of our old DNA and the strand of our new DNA, which I'm going to draw in blue here. Now, when the DNA mutation occurs, though, the same thing's going to happen. Of course, we're going to have a strand of our old DNA, and we're also going to have a strand of our new DNA. But in this new DNA, some of the base pairs, there's going to be errors in some of the base pairs, and that's going to cause the cell to code for things it shouldn't be coding for normally. Now, let's talk about two types of genes that we usually see in cancer cells that have been deactivated or activated the wrong way. So the first gene is the tumor suppressor gene that's supposed to be a T. Uh, and these genes suppress tumors. And there's also proto-oncogenes and oncogenes. And we're going to talk about what happens to these two types of genes when there's mutations. So tumor suppressor genes. When there's a mutation in a tumor suppressor gene, there's going to be unregulated cell growth. And that's going to, in extension, cause unregulated cell division. And we're going to look at that in a minute. But proto-oncogenes are healthy, healthy genes, which, when they have a mutation, uh, activate oncogenes, which become cancers. And this causes the cell to become cancerous as well. So on a cellular level, let's draw what this means. So let's say I have my drawing of a cell, and that's going to be a very crude drawing, just some organelles, some Golgi bodies. And then that cell is going to divide. And when that cell divides, it's going to divide into two, another crude picture. And those cells are going to keep dividing. And in a normal body, in a functioning body without cancer, there's going to be a stop mechanism inside these cells that tell these cells stop dividing. However, when, these, uh, when the DNA is mutated, the stop mechanism just stops working. So these cells are going to keep dividing. And when these cells keep dividing at an uncontrolled rate, that's what a tumor, that's when the tumor forms. The tumor is a clump of unregulated uh, cells. So that's in essence what cancer is. And these all occur due to DNA mutations. So let's go into the second part we talked about, viruses. So a virus is a key component in oncolytic virotherapy. And a virus is made up of three things. So first, it's made up of genetic material. This can be either DNA or RNA, and either one can be single-stranded or double-stranded. It really depends on what kind of virus you're working with. There's also a capsule, and this capsule is where the genetic material is stored, and it's usually made out of proteins. And uh, it's really important, and it's one of the structures of the virus. And one most important, I think, in a virus, one of the most important structures is the envelope. And the envelope is how a cell recognizes a virus. Because a virus can only work if a cell recognizes it. So let's look at three different viruses, and let's look at some different ways cells recognize virus. So one virus uh, that's, really, uh, that's really used a lot is the bacteriophage. And that's a spider kind of looking virus, in my opinion. And then we have viruses that have receptors on their surface. And these receptors kind of work like keys. And now we also have viruses that have, let's say, a phospholipid bilayer. That can also be the uh, different envelope. So if a virus has the same phospholipid bilayer as the cell, the cell is going to recognize that and let the virus in. Or it's going to recognize the receptor, which is kind of like a key to the lock. Because on the cell surface, there may be a receptor that could match the shape of the receptor on the virus. 
So that's how cells recognize viruses. Now, we know that cancer and viruses are two major components in the in oncolytic viral therapy, but how did, are they related? Well, there's a really simple answer. That's the DNA that we find within both of these entities or the genetic material that we find. And we see that in oncolytic viral therapy that uh, DNA and genetic material have uh, has a huge role. But why do we even need that? So let's talk about chemotherapy and current treatments of cancer to determine why oncolytic viral therapy can be helpful. So chemotherapy targets all fast growing cells. Why? Because cancer is consisting of consists of different fast growing cells which in essence cause tumors. And this can be a good thing and a bad thing. And it can be a good thing because well again it targets cancer cells. But again, it can be a bad thing because it targets hair, it targets nails, it targets any fast-growing cell in your body, even the good ones. So it's not selective of only the cancer cells. And also these chemotherapy, the radiation and the drugs have harmful effects on your body. But let's go further on how oncolytic viral therapy works. So I'm going to draw a virus right now. This, uh, this is going to be the Rigvir virus. And Rigvir virus is actually a virus that has proven to be pretty uh, beneficial in uh, oncolytic viral therapy and it uh, selectively targets cancer cells. So here are the receptors and what happens in oncolytic viral therapy is that scientists re-engineer the DNA in the virus to only attack cancer cells. So that's the re-engineered DNA and what's going to happen is that this cell is just going to act like a normal virus but only towards the cancer cells. So let's go deeper into how it's going to work and let's cover how the virus is going to work. And let's rehash basically how viruses infect cells. So there's my virus and I'm going to draw my cell in black. There's my cell and it's going to have that same key lock system that I talked about before of how the virus is going to uh, be recognized by the cell. And there's the genetic material inside the virus so again, uh, what's going to happen is that there's going to be a key lock. The virus is going to be recognized by the cell. And the genetic material from the virus is going to be transmitted into that cell. Now the cell uses its own DNA replication mechanisms to replicate, make, to make new uh, versions of that virus out of the virus's DNA that was injected. So more than one copy is going to be made, but, it, but copies of that virus are going to be made. And that's going to cause the cell to lice. And once the copies of these the, the virus is made, they're going to spread out. And they're going to selectively target more cancer cells. And that's the cool part is that oncolytic viral therapy, one key fact about it is that it only targets cancer cells. It's very selective. So although there's a lot of testing to be done, there's a few types of viruses that are currently being used or are currently in the works of trying to be used as treatment options. And that's the herpes virus and the polio virus. Now the herpes virus, what it's used for, uh, what what's cool about the herpes virus is that it has a lot of, um, and uh, not enzymes, but genes in it that already code for cell quote unquote suicide or cell apoptosis. And one of those are thymidine kinase or cytosine uh, deaminase. And these are just uh, really long names, but essentially both of these genes code for some kind of component for the cell to kill itself. And the polio virus is being used currently to treat glioblastoma in patients. And glioblastoma is a very aggressive cancer. So to be able to use a virus to treat glioblastoma is kind of really uh, amazing, actually. So in the future, even though there's a lot of testing to be done, oncolytic viral therapy can be a safe way of treating cancer selectively. And in essence... In the future, it might even be a cure to cancer.